Shocking, brutal, challenging, call it what you want. One thing's for sure, once you've clapped eyes on the Alpha SZ, you probably won't forget it. Introduced back in 1989, this car was built to give a jolt to the heart of Alfa Romeo and styling house Zagato, both of whom were nearly flatlining. As expensive as a Porsche 911 Carrera, but much, much rarer, it was a specialist thing then, and the SZ's design remains massively divisive to this day. Over a quarter of a century hasn't exactly taken the edge off the SZ's impact. It still looks absolutely bonkers, helped by the fact that it's so rare. Alfa only made around a thousand of these cars and only a handful ever made it to Australia. All of the SZs are red, apart from Andrea Zagato's personal car, which was finished in black. A low volume car, the SZ still has something of the hand-built feel about it, with its interesting panel fit and constant changes that seem to ensure that no two cars came out of the factory alike. The strong vertical lines in the design convince you that it's quite a tall car, but jump in and you realise that it sits very low and headroom is quite tight, but there's a beautiful airiness to the cabin with a huge glass area and delicate pillars. The man charged with sorting the SS dynamics was Giorgio Pianta, who was a bit of a legend in chassis tuning. He developed the Fiat 131 and Lancia Delta S4 rally cars, as well as the Alpha 75 Group A racer, and his fingerprints are all over the SZ with its aggressive front camber and lack of power understeer. The car rides well, it corners flat and it steers neatly. To get the best from the SZ dynamically, you need to set it to its lowest ride height. But with a ride height of just 60 millimetres, that can result in some painful tarmac interactions on bad roads. In true Alpha style, the car chatters to you as you drive, the cabin creaking and drumming, the suspension chirruping, and there's that characteristic tappity sound of the engine that's a constant accompaniment. It's got character, and as we know, character goes a long way. One of the great things about this car is you pop the bonnet and you can see an engine, not just a plastic shroud. And it's a great engine. The 3 litre V6 was designed by Giuseppe Busso and it's lasted a long time. From 1979 when it first appeared in the Alpha 6, right through to 2005 when it was replaced by a General Motors engine. Unfortunately, uh, Giuseppe Busso saw that last engine come off the line at the Aracy plant and then died three days later, so grazie Giuseppe. But in this installation, it's much like you got in the Alpha 75, but with uprated cooling and manifolds. They say it makes 210 horsepower, but every time I've seen one of these cars on the dyno, it makes quite a bit more. As successful as it was at making headlines, the SZ didn't do a lot for Alpha's bottom line. In fact, it's reported that they lost money on every single car that they made. What's more, there was a slap in the face for Zagato when Alpha put out the tender for the 1995 GTV and they chose Zagato's bitter rival, Pininfarina. By that time, Zagato were in a little bit of trouble and they were reportedly making more money doing industrial design on things like forklifts and trains. Sad days. What a fantastic thing this Alpha SZ is. Yes, you can call it a throwback and the handling is of its time, but it's none the worse for that. At the end of the 80s, everyone was launching high-tech, all-wheel drive turbocharged sports cars. And I like the simplicity of this car. A sports car should stir the soul, this one does all the time. The Alpha SZ is always an occasion.